So let's get started with our first steps in OpenTunes. Because this is the first video, there's actually quite a lot to learn. So we're going to go over quite a lot of stuff in quite a high speed. The idea is not to master all of this stuff and memorize all of it, but just to get a feel for the basics of how everything works. So don't worry if you don't catch everything. In the next video we are going to get some hands-on experience using the theory we have learned in this video. So when you open up OpenTunes, you get this OpenTunes startup window. Here you can select your project and your scene. A project is essentially just a root folder where all the files related to the project will be stored. We currently have the sandbox project and for now I'm going to keep it in the sandbox project. So I'm going to create a new scene in my sandbox project and I'm going to call it 01 basic drawing. This is a folder in which the scene will be saved. Right now it's set in a subfolder named scenes which we can find in the project root folder. We're going to leave all these settings the same and we're going to click on the button create scene. So let's see what we can see. We see a basic layout. Up here we have our scene name and our project name and we have a bunch of mini windows in the main scene down here. I like to call these mini windows dockers. For example, we've got our canvas over here. This docker you probably recognize, that's the toolbox. You can open up any of the dockers which you see here using the menu item window. For example, I can open up a second toolbar. Why I would want two toolbars open, I don't know, but I can if I want to. Any docker that you have open, you can just move it around by clicking and dragging up here. You can drop it into the layout like this. A red line appears and it falls in place. Or you could have it float over the layout like this. You can move any of these dockers except for the canvas docker. In this video, we are going to learn about the following dockers. The toolbar. The level palette. The canvas, obviously. This X sheet and the color picker. The real name for this color picker is actually the style editor. So if you're looking for it in the Windows menu, it's called the styles editor. Incidentally, OpenTunes has a bunch of default preset layouts. We are currently in the basics layout. There are more preset default layouts. You can see them up here. But we are going to stick to this basics layout. So as a first thing, I'm going to take this brush tool and I'm going to draw a simple stroke onto the canvas. And let's see what happens. As you can see, one of the columns in the X sheet gets filled up and a small green box appears here. This small green box is actually what's called a level in OpenTunes. A level is basically just a set of frames which you can draw on. As you can see, the current level which we have right now is only one frame long. We can make this level longer by clicking and dragging on this little tab here. Now this level is 12 frames long. Each frame in the level consists of the exact same drawing, namely this simple stroke. I'm going to right click on this level and I'm going to choose level settings. And there's two things here that I want to draw your attention to. First of all, we've got the name of the level right here. And secondly, you can see right here the type of level this is. So this is a Toons raster level. The important takeaway from this is that there are different types of level. If you draw something without specifying the type of level, it becomes a Toons raster level. So to make sure that I draw on another type of level, I am going to first set up that level. I right click on the first frame of the second column and I select new level. And down here I can select Toons vector level. In my opinion, Toons vector level is the best for beginners. To save time, I'm not going to tell you why, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. 
I'm also going to set the name of the level to vector level. What exactly is the difference between different levels? Well, that's a great question. For now, all you need to know is that different levels have different properties and you can use different tools on different levels. We will learn more about different levels in a future exercise. So let's delete this raster level and let's just make sure that we continue drawing on the vector level for now. Now when I click on brush and I draw something else, you'll see it's slightly different. One reason why I say this is really great for beginners is because with vectors you can change it even after you've painted it. To do that, just click on this control point editor and then click on the line. A blue center line appears and some white squares and some blue dots also appear. The white squares are what I call nodes. The nodes define all the points that the line passes through. The blue dots are what's called direction handles and the direction handles define the direction that the line takes at the nodes. Let's look at some other tools too. Let's have a look at the geometry tool. Using the geometry tool I can draw all sorts of shape. Incidentally, when you click on a new tool in this toolbar, you will see that the parameters up here change. These are all adjustable parameters. So for example, you can set the width of the stroke and in this case, the type of shape we are drawing. For example, a rectangle, or a circle, an ellipse, a line, a polyline, or whatever you want. Polyline is quite handy and in fact that's also made up of Bezier curves. It has nodes and direction handles. And you can edit this polyline with the control point editor. In fact you can also edit the other shapes with the control point editor too, so that's pretty handy. So those are some pretty nifty drawing tools there, so let's see what's next. We've got the eraser tool, which is a pretty straightforward tool. It's a bit Confusing sometimes, just try to bear in mind that you are actually erasing the center line and you're not erasing the whole stroke. And we've also got the fill tool. The fill tool is pretty straightforward. You just fill up closed shapes, but it is linked to another topic which is a little bit more confusing or unintuitive for the beginner, and that's color. Let's say I want to fill up this circle not with a black color but with another color. Intuitively you'd say, oh I just have to pick a different color down here. But when you do that, every color changes. What we need to do is create a new style color. And you can do that down here. Right click and choose new style. You can double click on the name to change it. For example, I'm going to name this color fill and this color stroke. It might be a little bit unintuitive, but it has a big advantage, and the big advantage is that it's really easy to change the color scheme at any point in time. And the last drawing tool we're going to talk about today is the selection tool. With this tool you can select one or more objects. Once you've selected an object, you can resize it, you can move it around, and you can rotate it. You can easily change the center of rotation, by the way, by moving these crosshairs. And that's all I'm going to talk about for now when it comes to drawing. Since this is the first video, actually we learned quite a lot. Maybe a little bit too much to easily digest, so that's why I'm going to take a break here. Probably you understand all of this, but it's kind of hard to keep it in your mind when it comes to actually doing it. When it comes to actually doing it, it turns out you forgot quite a lot. That's what always happens to me. <laughs> That's what I always tell my high school students too. You need to practice.
Even if you think you understand it abstractly and theoretically, <laughs> that's not enough. You have to practice. But you know they never listen to me. But I hope you will listen to me. And we're going to start the next step, which is follow these step-by-step -step instructions to get some hands-on experience, to get your first practice. So in the next video, we're going to start by drawing a fly and a frog using the basic tools we have just learned.